Xenonauts is a successor to the UFO franchise, just like XCOM. I'm doing a new game here. I'm going to play on normal because I am not a veteran. Now, first thing we need to do is to pick our base location. You can actually have multiple bases in this game. It's very similar to XCOM in a lot of ways, but also very different. I think they're both great games. Now, I think I'll place it right here. This is a good spot because it covers many groups of nations here. So they will not drop out of the, uh, I was going to say the XCOM project. They will not drop out of uh, funding us. Like I could put it over here and get North America and South America, along with all of Central, of course. The issue with that is there's so much water here, is I'd be shooting down aircraft over water and I wouldn't be able to uh, go ahead and nab them. Because we're limited by our radar range in this game, we can't just like fly all of the world. So I'm going to place it right here. And since we're at the, uh, the start of the Nile here and we're trying to stop the alien invasion, I'm going to go Old Western with my, uh, my naming system here. We're going to call it Denial. Now that we have a base up, I'm going to focus on this base and make it very strong. We start with um, some pre-made stuff here. We've got a laboratory, a workshop, a single radar array, some living quarters, a storeroom to put our loot, and four hangars. We have a transport ship to bring our troops over there to uh, hunt down the aliens for uh, abductions and other evil UFO things. And we have two fighter craft here to shoot down the UFOs and one empty hangar. This is our command center and I believe it just provides like all the power and is basically where we chill out for the base. The first thing we want to do is build a medical center because I don't know why the First base doesn't start with this, but without this, your troops will not heal. They will uh, they will just stay wounded <laughs> forever until you figure out you need to build a medical center and then 10 days later you'll have one. <laughs> I'm also going to add additional radar arrays because this will increase our range. You saw those uh, those three circles back there on the, uh, the geoscape. That's our maximum range, so we want to grab that. The more range we cover, the, uh, the more incidents we can uh, react to. Now see, as far as living quarters, that's living quarters for not only our troops, but also for our scientists and our engineers. So we're gonna wanna build more of that. This base is going to be um, pretty much focused on research and engineering here. Guess a good start. So we're gonna build another laboratory and we're gonna build another workshop. We're gonna invest a lot in this first base. I won't be building a second base for a while. Although this game should be actually a lot faster paced than uh, my Long War playthrough. In fact, they are working on a mod that's going to be like the Long War to uh, Xenonuts. Now right now, in my laboratory, they're already researching the alien invasion, uh, so I'm going to keep them on that. I am, however, going to hire five more scientists. Actually, we're just going to hire three more because we're almost at a living space here. only have two left and I want to save that. In this game, you actually assign scientists to a project, so you could be doing multiple projects if you desire. In fact, each base will have their, if you build a laboratory at each base, will have their own section here. This would be the workshop where I can build weapons, of course. I've got nothing starting out, so these guys are just going to hang out. As you notice, we have a lot of different nationalities here. This guy, I assume he's from the, uh, the Soviet Union because he's calling me comrade. This guy seems to be uh, more European here. What it is is uh, this takes place during the uh, the Cold War and sort of uh, a not so secret alliance anymore due to the actual alien invasion. So everyone's teaming up instead of uh, nuking each other and blowing up the whole world, we're going to fight off the aliens instead. So that sounds pretty good, right? Alright, so we start off with some actual badasses uh, compared to uh, XCOM. These are actually the elite of the elite here. Alright, I might want to change some things here though. Thankfully it looks like OBS is finally working for me. It's actually recording. 
had so much frustrations with this. I, I must have reinstalled everything like a million times, messed with the settings to get it to work. It would just stop recording and decide to randomly start streaming. So I wouldn't have anything recorded and people would be like talking to me. I'd be like, uh, why are there people talking to me? What am I doing online? <laughs> Which is, I'd love to stream, I, I need to be doing both if I want to put it on YouTube here. <laughs> it's kind of awkward when you randomly have a program that'll just start uh, streaming everything you're saying. Like, that that's weird. So I was thinking it was some kind of virus or something, but I don't know. It's the weirdest bug ever. Uh, okay, that's a little off topic. Alright, so first up, these are TUs, these are time units, like action points from uh, XCOM. And I'm looking for someone with, okay, actually 70 time units is insanely high. So we're gonna turn this person from a rifleman. We actually have classes and you can define what each class has as their default equipment. We're gonna change her to, let's see here, shield. It's really scout. I kinda wanna rename it to the, the scout class, but. So she gets a shield in this game, which is pretty sweet, so it'll help protect her, and she can scout with it, and she'll have a pistol as well. Fortunately, they don't have other uh, sidearms. But I guess uh, one thing I like is there's not a bazillion ballistic sidearms like there are in uh, XCOM, so once you get the alien weapons, you're not going to have like a bazillion different choices. Let's see, now see, carried weight, is, uh, it's red right now because she can't actually hold all this stuff. It gives her uh, a penalty to her time units, which is a real shame. She has really low strength compared to her awesome time units, which means she'll be able to travel far. That's like movement and everything. So we're going to take away the... Uh, I'd say we'll take away a pistol magazine. Does that do it? Oh, that won't do it. Oh, wow. I wish she had more strength. Hopefully she'll gain more. There we go. A magazine and grenade will give it to her. That gives her a third... 30 shots. I think that'll be fine. She's mostly there for scouting, not doing damage with a pistol anyway. And what we're going to do is, uh, actually we're not going to change that. We didn't really mess with the default that much. I'm going to go back here. I'm just sorting through all my troops, basically. Alright, I probably want to get some more assault guys next. The highest reflexes, that's like, uh, I don't know all the stats completely, but reflexes, I think, are chances of, um, Basically doing the overwatch, they'll automatically do it. And um, also dodging, I assume. So I want to make at least two assault guys. So I'm going to change this rifleman to an assault as well. Oh, actually, I want to change this one because he's got more time units. Because these guys are going to need to keep up uh, pace with the scout there. Mm, wait, what? He's already in assault? Oh shoot, is he? No, he's a rifle man. That's weird. What did they click on? Let me try that again. <laughs> uh, why did it go to this guy? That's weird. It keeps going to Per Lindgren for some reason instead of uh, Tyler Edwards. Why is it doing that? That's so strange. Shoot. Oh my god, why is it doing this? I'll just go next until we find him. Oh wow, we already passed through all of them. I think it's only showing the ones in Charlie 1. There we go, undersigned, Tyler Edwards. Maybe it's being all weird because he's actually not part of Charlie 1. That could be it. Which uh, makes sense, because when you're going through your troops, you don't want to be going through all of them. You probably just want to mess with your own team. We're going to add him to uh, Charlie 1, though, because we want this good assault guy. And we're, getting, we're giving everyone a med pack, as so long as they can carry it. I was considering taking the med pack off the scout, but uh, we'll see if she needs extra ammo or not. Fortunately, the only armor we have right now is basic armor. And I guess the idea is, is the aliens see in different spectrums, so having camouflage is pointless. And since we don't know how effective our armor is against the aliens, we're pretty much going for mobility first, with the only exception being, uh, you know, a helmet to prevent uh, hits from shrapnel and such. 
as we uh, progress in the game, we'll have a better idea of how to deal with the alien weapons. All right, how do I assign this guy? We need to go back here. We need to take someone off. We'll just take off. We'll worry about that at the end. Now I want my most accurate person to be a sniper. And that's already done. That's great. Now the strongest person should be a heavy weapons guy. And he is. Excellent. I think we're actually all set then. Let me uh, get rid of this guy. He's leaving Charlie one. I don't want to dismiss him. Oh, there we go. Unassigned. Ah, oh, that's easy. All right. So I have my uh, my group here. What I want to do next is I want to go to my aircraft equipment. And I have these two condors here. They have uh, an auto cannon, two sidewinders. In my dropship, I can actually change how these guys are arranged. This is how I'm going to deploy my troops. I'm going to have the assault classes and the uh, the shield class there at the gate at the uh, the ramp. So they can just pour out. I'll have the two riflemen at the sides here, and the central will have the machine gunner and the uh, the sniper. This way, these guys can all uh, get out there in the right way. You know, pretty much want to keep the uh, machine gunner and the uh, the sniper in reserve because they both need. Uh, to be able to set up in the proper positions. Well, these guys have shotguns and they can just run right into it and he's got a shield. The uh, the riflemen are basically like your bread and butter. They're uh, pretty much average against everything. All right, next up, you might remember I left a few uh, personnel spots. We're gonna hire some more soldiers. As you might be able to tell, they're not as good as the soldiers we currently have. They're not badasses. So we wanna keep those guys alive if at all possible. So I am going to be very careful with them in their first few missions. I like to recruit people with lots of bravery because it's the hardest stat in the game to actually raise. And oh, these guys are pretty good. Ooh, 36 accuracy though. Oh, that's that's awful. Wow. Hmm. They could become a, a rocket man though. Or she could rather. She's very strong. And this Russell Hall guy, he seems to be a pretty uh, badass guy. He's got everything almost above 60, or 60 average rather. Let's see here, Anna Ivanova. Got really good accuracy and bravery. That could be another sniper right there. Oh, actually I only have spots for two. <laughs> oh, there we go, higher selected. I keep clicking on the wrong buttons here. And I believe I can send them to training here. Oh, do I have to wait before they uh, arrive? I guess I do. They did get hired, right? Yeah, they're off of this uh, sheet here. I must have to wait until they arrive. They're probably not just like hanging out in the base here. Hmm, I'm not sure where I see how long I'm waiting or when they're gonna come though. You think it would say something on this screen? All right, and here's our storeroom. And like this guy says, there's nothing in the stores at this space that you need to worry about, Commander. Food, fuel, munitions, local local forces supply all of that to us free, and I make sure it gets to where it needs to be. The moment we have any manufactured equipment or capture technology, you'll be able to manage it here. He's got a pretty easy job right now. Alright, and this is just, you know, where we can change the equipment and stuff again. And this is, uh, if we had a garage and we had any vehicles, this is where they'd be at. <laughs> Oh, and that's the uh, Zenopedia here. We can look up all the, the info on what we've got here. All right, and for anything to happen, we need to actually start the clock. I keep looking over to making sure uh, OBS is still recording. Oh, that was fast. UFO detected, it's a small one. All right, let's send an intercept. The cool thing about this game is you can send more than one aircraft to uh, take down someone. We'll send both of our condors. Oh, we already did. Oh, there's another UFO. That's what's up. Oh, I see. And like uh, XCOM, I believe, time passes very, very slowly. But it always passes. You don't really pause. But you want to speed it up, of course. 
All right, we want to take this guy out. We can auto resolve it, or we can actually engage. And I'm not too familiar with the aerial battles, but I'm definitely going to uh, learn how to do them. <laughs> but with a hundred percent chance of uh, auto resolving, we won't leave it to luck, or my personal skill rather. <laughs> you can actually fight out the battles yourself, which XCOM does not have. All right, we're going to return them to base and hopefully send them out against the uh, the other UFO as soon as possible. And before that, though, we're going to check out this crash site. We can actually uh, we can call an airstrike on it, and that actually gives us fifteen thousand dollars because we're getting paid for basically doing our job, like a, like a commission. <laughs> but we're going to want to land our troops there, and any alien survivors, including what's left of the aircraft, we want to take control of that. All right, let's see if I can get this aircraft as well. Probably not. Oh, it might not let me launch it because they're rearming. Really? Yeah, that's a shame. I just need to give it a little bit more time. Let's do this mission first. All right, there's a few tooltips here. I should probably read them, but I'm not going to. All right, we have a crash site, of course, and it's a night mission, which kind of sucks. Normally you don't want these because uh, I don't know if the aliens can see in the dark or not, but uh, humans can't. So, uh, like it says, uh, fighting at a mission at night puts your soldiers at a disadvantage as they have reduced vision. Whilst oh, it does say the aliens are unaffected. Maybe I should read this. All right, so we just have basically short line of sight. Although we can throw flares, so that might be useful. Many maps also have sources of environmental light, example street lights that will light up the area around them. Use this to your advantage where possible. All right, I'm guessing we have a street light here. Uh, wow, actually, they apparently didn't add a graphic for the actual light. I'm zoomed out by all the way and nothing. <laughs> That's fine, it's not really that important. But you can tell there's little bits of light around here. And holy crap, there's an alien right there. We'll be invaded by the lizard men. As you can see with my layout here, it's very nice. Got the side doors here. And all the uh, the guys who are going to do most of the scouting and the uh, the upfront combat are right up in front like they should be. All right, we're going to try and kill that guy before he uh, can fire at us. Yeah, 6% chance to hit him from here. So the cool thing about this game, as you might notice, it's uh, quite different looking than uh, XCOM. Although on the inside, it's very similar. It just lacks the, uh, you know, AAA uh, production values. <laughs> this is a bit more old school. And in fact, everything is basically like action points, time units, whatever they want to call it. And as you can see, I can like move. It's a certain amount of units. It's not like, um, like I can keep moving again if I wanted to and then move again and move like one tile by one tile while in uh, XCOM. Pretty much had to follow whatever route they told you to uh, follow wherever the line was going. You had basically like, you know, like two turns per character. Well, in this one, we're going to have to start remembering how many timings it costs to uh, fire the different weapons. Oh, this is actually perfect. Oh, you know what? And you can also crouch. It'll increase your uh, accuracy up 25% boost, it says. And you present a smaller target to the enemy, so you're 25% harder to hit. It only costs three uh, to use. So that's freaking awesome. That leaves me just enough to fire with a pistol, which I'm guessing is not going to kill him. Wow. <laughs> I think he actually just hit this window. How, how can you possibly be that poor of a shot? Holy crap. I probably helped this guy. That's probably less cover. Now let's see if the, the shotgun can do any better here. Oh, you know what? I don't think he's going to have enough to use the shotgun after he gets here. Oh, he can do a, ooh, a very inaccurate hit. Is it worth it? Hmm, I don't know. We'll give it a shot. 22% chance. Oh, it was. Nice. So this is your traditional video game uh, shotgun, I guess. It fires a, a spread buckshot, basically. Thankfully, this guy's like sitting right underneath the streetlight, so I don't have to worry about um, the light on him or anything like that affecting my chance of hitting him. Also send up some more of these assault guys. I shouldn't really be putting my guys next to each other like that. Make some like grenade bait, right? <laughs> I 
Nice! One down. I didn't even have to use my sniper. Alright, I guess I'll just get everyone in uh, place here. Spread them out a bit. Don't really know where the uh, the enemy is at. Don't know if I want to just go straight down the street or one of these uh, side alleys. And what you want to do is, ideally, you you end them with some uh, of these time units so they can do overwatch. They automatically do overwatch, which means uh, it's reaction fire when they see the enemy moving. Alright, this is our sniper. Uh, I guess we'll just have him run up here. Should be in a good position to uh, hit anything over here. Again, that glass is probably blocking him, but that'll be fine for now. I don't know if I want to run him that far away. Where should I send this guy? I'll just back up this guy. Alright, let's end the turn. I feel like this game is actually more fast-paced than XCOM in that you don't have all the long animations and weird camera angles and stuff going on for every single movement and shot. As you notice, we also have a lot more uh, units to control than uh, Vanilla XCOM. Although, uh, they actually are making a Long War version of this game. Which uh, should be interesting. A Long War style version, I should say. Alright, I heard the noise. I think it came from over here. I'm not 100% certain though. We'll send one of these guys out to uh, investigate, maybe peek in a window. I wonder if I can pick anything up from that guy. Hmm, maybe nothing. Hmm, something around the corner maybe. We'll put him right next to this door so he can break in on the next turn. Crouch him down, give him a little bit uh, of defense there. <laughs> we'll have him have a buddy as well. One of the cool things about this game is you can actually open and guess what? Your guys can close doors. I know. How amazing is that? Unlike uh, <laughs> XCOM where you can only open them. I'll have this guy watch the window. Hmm. I guess there might not be anything in there. I wish I, I needed to send some more guys down here. I think, yeah, we'll, we'll move down this way first. Like, there could be guys coming from the street down here, too, so I need to be more careful. Oh, perfect. So I just gotta hope nothing attacks me this turn. <laughs> and she's got my highest movement, well, the highest amount of time units, so she can move all the way down here. Oh, that's a door as well. The garage door, I guess. Perfect. I kind of want to keep everyone together. Like, I kind of want a guy here just defending this point, but it's probably best if I just keep everyone together. I'm just going to run him down there. I know someone's going to bitch because I didn't uh, leave him in any cover, but oh well. <laughs> He's got enough guys around him, so unless they kill him the first turn, which I guess is uh, possible. <laughs> I haven't been shot at yet, I don't know how much damage they do. <laughs> uh, well see the sniper, I feel like the sniper should stick around here. But with no one covering that anymore. Uh, maybe I should have left a guy over there. I'll have her go around this way. She can cover this road. Actually, that's even better. Hopefully I don't find an alien like right here. Another thing that's different about this game, in XCOM, you could kind of just, like, ideally not discover aliens or scout the train or anything, because they would just chill there, and as soon as you see them, they're basically part of the battle. In this game, the aliens are all part of the battle and trying to kill you from the get-go. Just an interesting AI difference. Uh, 
let's have this guy look in the window here. Alright, seems to, well he doesn't have the greatest view, but seems to be safe. We'll stick him in cover over here. Perfect. Alright, let's bust down the door. Ah, perfect. Oh, there's actually a cop in here. wonder if he helps out. Ah, so this door is open. You notice that? I don't know who opened it. I can't really just shout to the cop up on, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> what I can do is send this guy around here. She'll be able to scout out any aliens. Oh, man, this is freaking me out. you think we'd uh, see another alien by now. They just aren't that many. It is a crash landing. They could have lost a lot of uh, people. See, I'm worried about standing by here. Like, are these explosive barrels? Usually they have some kind of like, actual explosion symbol or something on them, though. To make it really obvious or like little like fire symbol on them. Oh, I already moved that guy. I guess this room is safe. I'll have people move through the building, I suppose. Pretty unlikely to get shot from in there. I guess he could shoot from the window. And I'm pretty sure he can blow up the walls and stuff, just like in XCOM. Don't quote me that until uh, I actually try it, though. <laughs> yeah, I just want to get these guys moving down here. Oh, there's a perfect uh, defensive position right there. And he might have enough left to shoot. Oh, I think that might be the uh, the UFO right there. It's a pretty weird looking door. I'm not sure if this guy can actually see around this corner. Nah, he can't. Alright, that's fine. Ah, oh, man, my sniper's kind of all alone here. Kind of also want to keep him in this position, though. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, actually, there's a street light over there. That's why I can see further. Yeah. Hmm. I have a feeling there's some aliens up here, too. They're going to try and flank me. That sniper might be in trouble. Oh, there's someone. I'm pretty sure if we uh, have all of our guys hang out in the alien ship after killing all the aliens in it, we'll win the, the mission as well. It might be a time-based thing. I need to chill in there for a few turns. It's not the ideal way to win a mission, but it will save you time so you don't have to hunt guys down. And these night missions, it's kind of a pain because you can't really see much don't remember if there's like night vision goggles or anything like that. Better armor later on to let you see through it. Kind of feel like I just want to have all my guys up against this door. Man, this is really freaking me out not finding many aliens yet. These guys have the perfect spot with shotguns, so like, anything that opens that door is going to be in trouble. I don't think they have enough uh, time units to actually use their reaction fire, but it'll be freaking sweet. I guess I'll just have her uh, hang out up here. She can go right in the middle. <laughs> it's got the shield. <laughs> See if that's any good. <laughs> Hopefully everything's actually recording still. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be sore if I got to, like... Uh... <laughs> If I get to the end of this and it's not even recorded, I have to start the whole uh, Let's Play all over again. Uh, let's see here. I should probably save more often. I think I'll save after this mission, assuming everything uh, happened right. This guy's got the big machine gun here. Or she does, rather. Small girl with a big gun. That'll be very useful. Unfortunately, she won't be able to use it this turn. I might as well just run everyone up here. Anything opens that door, they're going to be wasted next turn. Hopefully I don't lose anyone, because these are the, uh, like, superior troops I want to keep alive. 
Not that you don't normally want to keep your troops alive. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should have sent that guy around up here. You know what? I should probably just call this sniper all the way back down here so he's not all alone over there. It's a he, right? Yeah, I think so. Oh, you know, I probably should have saved one of these units just turn around. Oh, can I? Oh, no, not entirely. <laughs> nice! I think he did nothing, right? Hit the shield or something? Oh, the door closed. Can I just open the door just like an XCOM? I love how I can just, like, open alien doors. They have, like, no security. Look at all the... I like the, uh, the war damage done to this craft, though. XCOM was pretty cool, too. It had all, like, the wreckage and stuff all around it. This is what I mean when, like, both games, I think both games are freaking awesome. I can't wait for XCOM 2, I can't wait for Xenonauts 2. XCOM 2 will probably come out first. But I just like how they both showed the, uh, like, the grit, like, the war damage. This isn't, like, a pristine UFO because it got shot down, right? Hopefully there's still, uh, some decent stuff I can get here. You know, oh, maybe I should check out these grenades. I'm pretty sure these grenades are actually awesome. Oh, it doesn't actually tell me what it does. Oh, hover attacks, come on. I need to look at those grenades later. I'm pretty sure the flare is like a type of stun though, so I'll probably want to use the flare. A scout? Uh, I think she could only carry the three grenades, so hopefully she gets a little bit stronger. But I think they're your main grenade person because obviously the pistol isn't really that interesting. And that way everyone else can save their uh, units for the... Uh, stuff that matters. How do I unslice this? Before I like fire on my own troops here. Oh, hello. Oh, sweet. And those guys are dead. It's just the one guy. Oh, this all looks like it's in good condition too. Uh, so I opened the door. Now do I want to run back though? <laughs> like, I think I'll just shoot the guy. Why not? Point blank range. Nice. Can't really miss now, can I? The thing is, I'm pretty sure there's friendly fire, just like in XCOM, so I probably don't want to shoot from here. Oh, you can actually tell. It tells you where it's blocked. Oh, that's really cool. So that's the bullet trail. Those little mini boxes there. Alright, we'll just move this shotgun guy up. It's just the one guy. We should be able to kill him pretty easily, I think. I probably don't want him just blocking the door. I want to give the other guy some shots. Nice! I think this whole thing is secure. Oh yeah, that's it's a small alien craft. Can I grab the guns? Uh, is that inventory? Oh shit! Well look at that. Alien plasma rifle, can I just like use this? Uh, probably not. It's made for aliens I suppose. And a plasma battery? I'm guessing that's ammunition for the plasma rifle. And the corpse itself. I think we pick all this up at the end of the mission. I don't think it doesn't even let me use it. <laughs> Alright, let's check around the side here. I want to hunt down all the aliens. Oh, I probably should have waited. Yeah, we'll just head up this way. I don't want to... Hopefully I'm not spreading my guys out too far now. We'll send her back up here. <laughs> I'm sorry, he looks like... I don't know why. He looks feminine to me. I keep thinking he's a girl. It's not a good idea to make fun of snipers. To enjoy life. <laughs> I don't think there's an alien there. We'll send this guy. Oh, yeah, you're way back here. Just gotta run up and catch up to everything else. Now, hopefully the aliens can't do anything to my aircraft, because that would suck. <laughs> Whoa! Like I said, they, they move on their own. 
See, normally in XCOM, they won't even attack you until you find them. <laughs> there we go. Oh, he's right there. You might as well go for the most accurate shot. I haven't used the other uh, rifle yet, have I? It's pretty standard. Probably better at medium range. Yeah, it's only a 50% chance to hit from that range. Move him up a bit. Oh, you can do a uh, fully automatic. Nice. I guess it's, yeah, this is an M16. <laughs> it's like a, a Model 2. I guess that fits the time period. Yeah, we'll see if he hits. Nice. Dead. You may have to use a sniper. Oh, that's all of them. Excellent. Wow, okay, that was actually not bad at all. That was went uh, really well. Yeah, I got a Light Scout Data Core, Alien Alloys, Civilian Guard Corpse, and Alien Plasma Pistols. All sent to Research Division. Oh, that'd be nice. Only got two Alien Alloys. Um, Civilian Non-Combatant Corpse. All those guys must be like the technicians of the ship. Alright, I made a bunch of money too. That was awesome. And I think this is saying these guys gained these stats. So I had a lot of guys that gained a little bit of every stat, I think. Isn't that freaking awesome? I think that's freaking awesome. I got three new research projects now. I'm still researching the uh, alien invasion though. My new researchers haven't come in yet.